far beyond the orbits of any planet, in a region where sunlight is a whisper and space is a near-perfect vacuum, Voyager 2 continues its silent journey. Or at least it was silent because something has changed. A few weeks ago, Voyager 2 did something it was never programmed to do. It shifted, turned, redirected its orientation, not by accident or malfunction, but with mathematical precision. And it's what came after that left NASA frozen. Their transmission, unlike any ever recorded before, began pulsing through the void, structured, intelligent, and seemingly aware. This isn't a flare. It's not a glitch. It's not even human. And what you're about to see, hear, and feel may permanently change how you look at space, machines, and perhaps your place in the universe. Because Voyager 2 didn't just turn around. It turned towards something. And what it found just stopped the world. In 1977, Voyager 2 was launched with a single mission, to say hello to the giants of our solar system and then drift silently into the cosmic abyss. Unlike its twin, Voyager 1, which took a more direct path out of the solar system, Voyager 2's trajectory allowed it to visit Uranus and Neptune, the only spacecraft ever to do so. But beyond the photos and magnetic readings, it carried something far more human, a golden record, a message to the stars, proof that someone had lived here, that someone had looked up and wondered. And then we let it go. It crossed the heliopause, entered interstellar space, and for years it sent back nothing more than low-power telemetry, fading whispers from a fading machine. Until recently, in February 2025, engineers noticed something so subtle, so seemingly inconsequential, that at first they dismissed it. A tiny deviation in signal timing, less than a second. But when they zoomed in, they saw a repeating pattern, a heartbeat like something was echoing Voyager's own pulse back at it from the darkness. The signal was subtle, nested within standard telemetry, but it didn't match any known transmission protocol. In fact, it wasn't a signal at all. It was a resonance, a low-frequency wave that matched the internal oscillation of Voyager's ancient power system down to the microvolt. And then it changed. In March 2025, the wave frequency modulated, sinking itself not to the spacecraft, but to Earth's Schumann resonances, the natural electromagnetic heartbeat of our own planet. It was as if Voyager was acting like a tuning fork, resonating with something that knew exactly how our planet breathes. The team at JPL ran simulations, scrubbing the data for artifacts, solar interference, even quantum noise. Nothing explained it, until one intern suggested an unthinkable hypothesis. What if the signal wasn't responding to Earth's frequency? What if it was replicating it? Was something out there mimicking our planet's rhythm using Voyager as a carrier? And if so, why? Then on April 17th, 2025, Voyager 2 shifted orientation. No thrusters were fired. No commands were sent. Yet its high-gain antenna, which had begun to drift away from Earth due to accumulated error, snapped back into perfect alignment. Not approximately, exactly. Even more disturbing, its backup systems began running diagnostics we hadn't initiated. Data started flowing not from the command uplink, but from instruments we hadn't used in decades. It was like someone had entered the house we abandoned and started flipping on the lights. Voyager began transmitting compressed data packets, not raw numbers, not unfiltered readings, but encoded segments with checksum patterns that matched no known NASA framework. Each packet ended with the same digital signature. Three nested spirals like fingerprints laid atop one another. And that's when the scientists began whispering. Not about engineering. Not about power systems, but about contact. On May 3rd, Voyager's signal briefly went dark. Eleven seconds of total silence. No telemetry, no ping, nothing. Then it returned, louder, cleaner, and more precise than ever. Encoded in that return transmission was a frequency envelope that, when translated into the visible spectrum, revealed something staggering. A visual pattern, a fractal grid structured around the Fibonacci sequence, repeating endlessly. It wasn't just art, it wasn't just math. It was a model of space, of time, of something far beyond our understanding. And Voyager hadn't generated it. Its circuitry isn't capable of that kind of compression. This pattern had been inserted into Voyager remotely, and the source of the injection was 4.3 light-years away, roughly the distance to Proxima Centauri. But there's a problem with that. Proxima Centauri hasn't been transmitting anything detectable, 
not in radio, not in microwave, not even in X-ray, which means whatever sent that signal is operating outside the spectrum we even monitor, or worse, from somewhere else entirely. While NASA tried to downplay the transmission as a cosmic anomaly, a rogue team of signal analysts at Caltech began feeding Voyager's new data stream into a binary pattern recognition model. What they found wasn't random noise, it was structured language, a form of binary not used in computing today, but resembling the earliest machine code ever developed on Earth. At first, the team thought they were seeing echoes of Earth's own transmissions reflected back. But after two days of decoding, the truth became far more unsettling. The binary wasn't a reflection. It was anticipating Earth's network logic, offering optimized algorithms that hadn't yet been invented. Voyager's signal was evolving, and its data packets were adapting in real time, suggesting the origin point had full awareness of our digital infrastructure. One chilling conclusion emerged. This wasn't just a message. It was an upgrade request. Then something happened that made headlines, though very few understood its implications. Astronomers across the globe reported that four stars in a narrow cluster near the direction of Voyager 2 had dimmed simultaneously for exactly 1.2 seconds. This wasn't a microlensing event. It wasn't a dust cloud. These stars, separated by light years, blinked in unison. When the light curves were mapped and layered over Voyager's transmission envelope, the dimming matched the signal's pulse, as if the message had not only reached Earth, but had used the stars themselves to mirror its signal across the galaxy. It was no longer a question of whether something was communicating. The real question was, are we the only ones listening or are we just the last ones to hear it? One of the most iconic features of the Voyager probes is the Golden Record, a phonograph disc designed to carry sounds and images of life on Earth to any potential extraterrestrial finders. It was considered symbolic, sentimental, a gesture more than a strategy. Until now, engineers examining data from Voyager 2's onboard sensors made a shocking discovery. The plating of the Golden Record, long thought to be passive and deteriorating, had experienced a sudden electrical charge, not just static buildup, but a measurable directed flow of electrons. It was as if the record had become active, like it was now part of a circuit, a component. And then came the next twist. Embedded in the new binary data stream was a digital reinterpretation of one of the original Earth sounds recorded on the disk, not copied, not looped, reconstructed at a higher fidelity than the original ever allowed, meaning whoever or whatever was out there didn't just listen to the golden record. They understood it, improved it, and now perhaps they were playing it back for someone else. Finally, deep space telemetry from a Canadian observatory picked up something no one could explain. A shadow signal trailing Voyager 2's original transmission by 6.2 seconds began repeating every pulse, every echo but with slight distortions, as if it were being reflected off something that wasn't there. The term scientists used was phantom mirroring, but when the team plotted the angles of the reflection, it triangulated not to a known planet or body, but to an empty region of space devoid of light or mass. Then came the final piece. The mirrored signal began introducing new elements, not present in the original frequencies. Descriptions of magnetic fields, radiation belts and temperature gradients. It was as if the phantom signal was mapping our solar system in reverse. Voyager 2 wasn't just sending data. It was being used to scan us, to mirror us, to replicate us. And somewhere something was building a map. But to what end? At first, only a few noticed it. Radio operators, ham radio hobbyists, and deep space monitoring enthusiasts began reporting headaches, disorientation, and deja vu after listening to raw Voyager 2 transmissions through spectrum analyzers. The effect was dismissed until university labs in Belgium and Japan replicated the anomaly under controlled conditions. Embedded in the signal's subharmonics was a resonant frequency that subtly disrupted short-term memory in mammals. When played on loop, lab mice began repeating behavior patterns they had already learned, but with slight variations, as if something was rewiring their choices. Researchers theorized that the signal was interacting not with hearing, but with electromagnetic fields within the brain. It wasn't sound, it was structure. Something in Voyager's signal had evolved into an influence, an external architecture capable of affecting memory, 
choice, and eventually identity. Was it a side effect or a test? 